Hello my crafty friends and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday where I'm playing on my art journal and this is my stone paper journal from my latest collection by Stamperia. I am going to play with acrylics today and I'm going to share an amazing technique which is possible just because this is stone paper. I haven't prepped the pages at all, no primer, no gesso, I'm working with my acrylics directly on top of the pages and I'm going to apply two colors just by using a brush. I do dump the brush a little bit with water and you can also spray water directly on top of your page which is going to help you spread the paint easier. Now, along with my collection with Stamperia, I do suggest six colors of acrylic paints from their Allegro collection. They come as a set and these two colors are from that set. You will be able to find it along with the rest of the collection. By the way, as I'm spreading the colors, I want to let you know that most of the shops are getting the products this week or the next one. And you will find them in stock already in many shops close to you. I am trying to put together a list by country with shops that do carry the collection but the best bet for you would be to go to Google and just uh, search for Create Happiness Stamperia. I am sure a shop close to you is going to pop up since they are available worldwide from Canada to USA to the whole Europe to New Zealand to Australia, South Africa, you name it. So here as you can see I did mix two colors directly on top of my pages and now I'm using white, this is milk white acrylic paint and I'm going to apply it with a brayer. And you see here I'm using one of my jelly plates and that's just because to use it as a palette as it is really helpful to pick up the acrylic paint from there with my brayer. Another one of my go-to techniques when it comes to backgrounds is to use stenciling with a bit of modeling paste. Here I'm using volume paste. It is one of my favorite modeling pastes lately just because it is really thick, it holds its shape, it doesn't smell at all, plus it dries really quickly. And I hate waiting for paste to dry. I'm a really impatient crafter. I'm using my book stencil from my collection and I am using just a part of it. I'm not using the part with the letters, but the one with the coffee stains and the grid. I made sure that uh, my stencils do have different areas so you can mix and match them or use just one area from each stencil that you like the most or fits the project. Now I'm using my heat gun just really quickly to make sure that this is completely dry and I want you to see how flat this page is. I did use water, I did use acrylics, I did use paste, but just because this is stone paper, it's indestructible. Now I'm going to bring in my ephemera and I like to keep them in a little box so that I can easily browse through them. I'm going with the boots for today, but you can definitely use this background with any of the rest focal points. So you can go with the teacups, you can go with the balloon, you can even go with the books. Anything is going to pop on top of this background. And this would make a great background for a romantic look and feel, for a shabby chic look and feel. But today I'm going to show you a really fun technique on how you can completely transform it and turn it into a vintage looking project. Keep in mind this technique is possible because I'm working on stone paper, otherwise it would bleed at the back and it would warp the pages. So I'm going to use vintage antiquing paste. You are going to need a brush, I went with a stiff one but you can definitely use a softer one. And this vintage antiquing paste is oil based and that's why you don't want to go on top of paper with uh, something oily. It is going to bleed at the back and it's going to create a big mess. So in order to dilute this just because it is not water based but oil based you need to work either with mineral spirit or with turpentine. So here I'm just adding a blob of color and with my pipette I'm going to add a little bit of my mineral spirit so that I can thin it down. This is going to make application easier with a brush. Then grab your brush and cover up completely the whole background. One thing you need to keep in mind is that you don't have to work fast. This is oil based and it is going to take a long time to dry. Also don't worry about smooth application. You can see mine is a complete mess. It doesn't really matter because we are going to use a baby wipe or a paper towel 
and lift that color. I'm doing that with a paper towel here so you can see the effect. It does pick up some of the color but you cannot see what's underneath. However, if you do that with a baby wipe, you will be able to remove even more of that vintage antique ink paste. It is going to reveal the corals underneath and it's going to give that amazing patina look and feel that is going to turn that background into looking vintage. I absolutely love this technique and I'm having so much fun playing with it. Usually they use this technique for three-dimensional projects on top of canvases where you have lots and lots of dimension and that paste goes on all those nooks and crannies. However, as you can see, you can definitely use it on a flat project like I'm doing here because it's going to give you in no time that beautiful vintage look and feel. With your baby wipe you can remove as much of the brown color as you want, you can leave areas darker and others lighter and as I go over the vintage space where I have that texture I go lightly so that I don't pick up all that brown from the nooks and crannies that I created with my texture. The fun part about this technique is that you can start with any colors that you like. No matter how bright they are or how happy they look, once you apply that vintage antique paste on top, you will get that vintage look in no time. And here is how the back of the page looks, completely clean, no bleeding at all, and of course my first project is safe as well. Again, this is stone paper, that's why. Keep in mind that an oil-based paint wouldn't work on paper because it would make the back really oily. And of course, since I removed most of the paint with my baby wipe, I can quickly dry it out by using my heat gun. So my background is ready and just as a reminder, this is an oil-based product, so you need to use turpentine in order to clean up your uh, palette as well as your brush. Now at this stage the background looks amazing, it is finished, you can definitely go ahead and start sticking your focal points, however this is where I don't know when to stop and I just have to use one of my stamps. This is the Crackle Texture Stamp and it is from my Elements stamp set. I designed this stamp set to include all the basic elements that you need for a background. If you don't want to get ever another stamp set for your background, then this is the one that you need to have on hand. You will use it for years and it works for so many different uh, styles. So now I'm switching to some splotches and uh, the ink that I'm going with is dye ink again from my collection. This is coffee color. By the way, I get a lot of questions about those inks. These are going to be available in August. They are still in the production process and they haven't arrived in Stamperia warehouses yet. And of course I cannot complete a background without doing a little bit of text stamping, so here I am using one of the text stamps. There are two included in this stamp set, one with a script font and another one with a typed font, so you can pick any one that you like and you feel that it matches your project. Two of the stencils that I designed for this collection are full of borders which are perfect for uh, creating frames on your art journal and I absolutely love those edges on both of them. So for today I decided to go with one that uh, is full of scallops. I specifically designed all the border designs on those two stencils with a corner to help you out. To apply color here I'm using uh, black dye ink and uh, applying it with a blending tool but you can definitely go with uh, acrylic paint if you like for a more black, darker, saturated look. So I will quickly repeat the same process all around the edges to create a lovely frame. And now it's time to create my composition. So here are the boots for my ephemera pack and just to help it blend better with the background to give it the same look and feel, I'm inking up the edges with coffee dye ink. Notice here I'm applying some shadow where those two boots meet. Just because this is water-based, I can easily blend it with my finger since you can activate that ink when you touch it with a baby wipe. Here is what I'm going to do here. The ephemera are matte, however they do have kind of a coating on top that allows for this technique to work. 
Now, all the ephemera are self-adhesive and you can easily peel them off and stick them down. However, I don't like to do that usually since I always change my mind and I want to tuck things underneath. So I like to stick them down with glue, mainly staying at the center and not adding glue all the way to the edge. Along with the boots in the ephemera pack, you will find lots of leaves and flowers and I'm going to show you here some examples, like these ones here, that you can use to dress up your boots. Here is an example that I did previously. And since I'm showing you this example, I'm going to create something different today, just to show you that uh, these boots give you the opportunity to use any type of flowers that you already have in your stash. So here is what I did for the project on the right. I just played with flowers and leaves from the ephemera pack to create a little composition for each one of those boots. And you get the idea, you can easily recreate that. But since I wanted to create something different for today, I'm going to use flowers from this beautiful pattern paper. I did use it previously in another project. You see the flower compositions here are wonderful. This is a Stamperia paper pad, which is called Garden of Promises. It is well loved in my craft room. I keep on using uh, bits and pieces from this collection all the time. So just use my scissors and fuzzy cut a bunch of these flowers and I'm going to stick them on top of the boots. So look through your stash, you will find lovely flowers, I'm sure of it, that you can fuzzy cut and dress up your focal points. I also used my scissors to fuzzy cut a few of the leaves, again from the same pattern paper, and I like how that green is a contrasting color to the background, and it really helps the whole flower composition to stand out even more against the background. Now this cloak is again from the same pattern paper collection and just fuzzy cut it, I'm inking up the edges and this is where I want to tuck it underneath the boots. And you can tell, definitely tell, that uh, I don't plan things from the beginning. I do have a general idea of what I want to do. So here, for example, I was going with my boots. Then I thought I would use my flowers, but changed my mind to bigger flowers from another pattern collection. Then I went with a cloak, so let's use that as well. But I can't uh, tuck it underneath as a whole, so I have to be creative here. And the good thing is that uh, I didn't add glue all the way to the edges, so it is possible for me to lift a little bit the edges of the boots so that I can tuck it underneath. And then back to the pattern paper for my quote, and there is the perfect one for my composition. I decided to go with flowers need time to blossom, which are perfect since I used flowers as well as that clock from the pattern paper. And if you follow me for years, you already know that I like to use motivational and optimistic quotes on my pages. So this is all about being patient and something beautiful is going to come your way. So here I'm using my big scissors and I'm going to separate those lines so that I can stick each one of those strips separately. And the beauty of playing with cutouts is that you can move them around, audition other elements, how you can dress them up, and once you're happy with the result, then you can commit and stick everything down. Of course, for all the die cuts before sticking them down, I do go all around them with brown ink just to make sure that they have the same look and feel as the rest of the design. It is a little trick that brings all the different elements together. And here again you can see what I was uh, telling you about not adding glue all the way to the edges. I always change my mind and I want to stick things underneath. And now to the finishing touches, I'm going to use my rabbons, the white text rabbons, and I'm going to add a little bit of that detail on top of some of the darker areas, some of the flowers, some of the leaves, even on top of the boots. It is a little detail that is going to bring again all the elements together, since they are going to have the same little detail on top of them. And you can do that for your background if you like as well. Then I need to add my highlights with my white gel pen. This is a little touch that I like to do on pretty much every page that I'm making. I feel like it gives a whimsical look and I love the highlights, the white highlights on the cutouts. 
Another little finishing touch that I like to do on my pages is when I have a border to go around it with my white gel pen. I feel like it is a very little touch but it has a big impact on the border. It makes it look more finished. Then here I'm using a thin black marker and I'm going around the quote just to outline it. And you can definitely go around your cutouts if you like and doodle a little bit of black. It is going to help the cutouts more, to stand out more. It's definitely not something that you have to do. However, if you go that way, make sure that your lines are quite sketchy. Don't go for the perfect lines. Well, at least that's what I feel it looks best. And you know what is coming next? I'm going to add some white splashes. You can do this step either by diluting gesso, white gesso, either by diluting your uh, white acrylic paint. Here I'm going with white calligraphy ink. It stays nice and white on top of your project. And I find it is really convenient since all I have to do is to just dip my brush in without having to dilute it with water. And that completes the project for today. Just like always, you will find links to everything I used down below in the description. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.